Okay, here's a quick video on getting these crimped. These that use the connecting pins for the USB type connector. So this is just half of what would have been a typical USB header that would stack these two together. Oh yeah, they're bundled, that's why they're fighting. So, first things first. So it looks like the useful length would be about, about where I've marked the tape. Keep them equidistant with some safety. And get a pair of scissors to snip them. So we can separate this. For now, we'll keep this as a good reference. This can be separated. And we'll guesstimate where we'll need it cut back. And it's usually about three quarters of an inch back. It helps to have an electrician's splicing knife like this. This will get the cutting done without scoring all the way through like a utility knife would. So about three quarters of an inch back. Easy does it. Then back with the electrician scissors, you can kind of fit this in there. View more of the wire below. Oops. Okay. Once we have this pulled through, we can snip the rest of it off. Okay. <laughs> and we got the heat shrink back. Now to give us some working room, especially where we can see the markings on the wire, we will push this sleeve back some. That's some ability to compress this sleeve so that we have this much working room. This is where a pair of forceps come in very handy. So this holds the sleeve back and gives you this much working room. Oh, before we split the wires apart. This uh, pair of wire strippers work um, that came with your 
Q Cool kit. Uh, it might take a little bit of finessing this to, to get it to strip. Don't pinch too hard, otherwise you strip where this jaw bites on. I find that giving it light pressure helps hold it in place while the rest of the wire strips like that. There we go. A little bit of excess is fine. Too much excess would bind up in the connector. So. You can peel back more to give yourself more working room, especially with the crimper. And also working room to get the ends twisted so that they stay neat in the crimper. Hopefully YouTube doesn't ban this video due to the background music, but this is good music to work to. So now that we have the YNs prepped, now we will prep these connector pins, technically sockets, in the crimper. So this crimper that came with the Q Cool kit, uh, this is what I do to prep it. So I'll let the bigger end kind of hold these two uh, V-shaped flaps in place. And I let it go down to one click, and there, it's held in place. If it's in focus, yes it is. Now that it's held in place, we can start with this marked wire. And I'll insert it to the point where I see this wire end just barely protrudes past where the crimp point is. I think it helps also to get get them out of the way so that the crimper doesn't damage the wire ends so I'm not sure whether you can see it but it's barely protruding there and cinch it down so this is what we want technically where the uninsulated part of the wire is crimped flat and there's just enough crimping on the insulated part to hold it in place and provide strain relief. But the issue is that this diameter is too big. Oops. This diameter of the, un, uh, of the insulated part of the crimp is too big to fit very well in, in this here hole. So the trick that has given me a lot of luck is to grab a pair of needle nose pliers that I've since put away. Hmm. I need to put this through a video editor. Okay, so it helps to very gently squeeze the sides and you can maybe see that it's squeezed in a little bit and then squeeze the top and bottom a little bit so that if you look at it down here, it's about the same 
uh, it, it looks flat instead of this being bigger. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more on this side. And now, if we undo this, look through this kit oops one two three one two three four right here now this would fit right in without fighting so that's part of what you were probably experiencing where the crimp on the insulated part of the wire remained too big to fit through this opening. So we'll go on with the other two. Just one click and it'll hold it in place just fine. You can see that it's held right there. And we'll push the other wires out of the way so that the crimper doesn't damage them. Then we can verify, oh, that's not a very good crimp. Let's try that again. You can see, this is what we don't want. You can see that the crimp for the insulated part is not touching the insulation that would form part of the strain relief. So for now, okay, pulls out, thankfully. Let's try that one more time. Okay, that's where we want it. Oh, yeah, it's not touching again. That's strange. This might be because it's was stripped long. Let's trim that back some. just needs to stick out maybe three-eighths of an inch. There. So now you can see this is crimping on the insulation forming a strain relief and this is a much more secure connection which we then make a little bit more secure by pinching in a little bit and I'm not putting very much strength into the pliers just enough to deform it and we will double check the connection here so the marked, marked wire strand is for the 5 volt, 
The second one is for um, what is marked to be D, probably, yep, D. So we put this in pin number two position. Goes all the way through. There. Okay, so it's bunched up because I had to cut it back some a little bit earlier. But this will all get concealed in the sleeve. Now for the third and final crimp connector. Okay. Make sure it's sitting in place. Push these two out of the way. So you can see this is almost quarter of an inch long. We might want to snip it back. Very good. Pinch it a little bit. And into the fourth connector. It's like a glove. Release the hemostat and it should all cover nicely, like so. So this is ready to connect into the main board. And it's right around the goal length. Hope this helps. <laughs>